This is one of multiple IP addressing and subnetting scenarios. Rather than just working out the subnets for a scenario, we're gonna work them out and then configure the devices so that we can practically design and configure a Cisco IP network. So we've successfully configured this subnet. Now we need to configure this subnet. And this gets a little bit more interesting because it's 192.168.1.64 slash 26. So we already know what the subnet address is. Now we need to work out what the first host address is. So what is the first host for this network? Now to work out to the first host, you make the host portion zeros, except for the last bit, which you set to a one. But to work out the decimal value over here, you need to look at the entire octet. So this is 64, because that's the network, plus one is 65. So the first host is 65. What is the last host? And the easiest way to work that out actually is to do broadcast first and then work out the last host. So for the broadcast, what we do is we fill the host portion with binary ones. So what is that? It's 255 less 128, which is 127. So the broadcast address is 192.168.1.127. Now the last host is one less than the broadcast address. So for the last host, we set the host portion to binary ones except for the last bit. So what is that equal to? That's equal to 126. So let's assume that we configure the router with the last IP address in the subnet, and then we're going to enable DHCP on the router to allocate IP addresses to the hosts. So here's router two. On the fast ethernet interface, I'm gonna no shut the interface, and then I'm gonna configure an IP address as we worked out 192.168.1.126. And then we need to specify the subnet mask, 255.255.255.192. So can we ping our local address? Yes, we can. Now for host allocation, let's use DHCP. So we'll create a DHCP pool with the name New York. And here we need to specify the network. So what is the network? It's 192.168. 164, and here we have an option. We can either use slash 26 or the dotted decimal notation. So let's use CIDR or slash 26. Do show run will allow us to see our configuration. So that's what we've done in the DHCP pool. Now we need to configure a default gateway. So our default gateway is gonna be 192.168.1. 126. There are other options that we can specify in DHCP, such as DNS server. And in this case, let's set the DNS server to the local router. In the real world, you probably have a separate DNS server. So show run. There's the DHCP pool that we've configured. We've configured the default gateway or default router and DNS server. Now on the hosts, let's see if they get IP addresses. So on the hosts, we're gonna configure them to use DHCP rather than static IP addresses. So let's do that on both hosts or both PCs. Change them to use DHCP and then let's start them up and let's see if they get an IP address from the DHCP server. Open up a console to both of them. So here you can see the first host got an IP address, 192.168.1.65. And the second host got an IP address of 192.168.1.66.
So can the second host ping the first host? Yes, it can. Will it be able to ping the default gateway? Let's try that. Yes, it can. So we've successfully configured the New York site with an IP address on the default gateway, and we've set up DHCP. Now, one thing you want to do when you set up a DHCP pool like this is specify the excluded address. We don't want the DHCP server to allocate its own address. So we can use the command IP DHCP server, or rather IP DHCP excluded address. And we can specify a range of addresses to exclude. In this example, we'll only exclude the local router's IP address. So we've excluded the local router's IP address, which means that it won't be allocated through DHCP. I'll save the router's configuration. And while we're here, let's save router1's configuration. Okay, so at this point, we've configured both San Francisco and New York. The next step is to configure the WAN connection. Now, it's inefficient to use a subnet that supports 62 hosts for a network that only requires two. But for now, let's start off by using the subnet that we allocated. And then in a subsequent video, I'll show you how to optimize this. So on router one, let's allocate the first IP address in the subnet to the router. So that's essentially one more than the subnet address, so 129. And one more than that would be 130 with our subnet mask. So what you'll notice is the first IP address is one more than the subnet address, and the last IP address is one less than the broadcast address. So we need to no shut these two interfaces. And what should happen now is router one should be able to ping router two, which it can. So we've successfully configured IP addresses on the WAN and on both LAN interfaces. But to enable full connectivity in this network, we need to run a routing protocol. And in this example, I'll run EIGRP and enable EIGRP on network 192.168.1.0. Now that is a class full network. In other words, it's looking at class C 192.168.1.0 and not to the subnet addresses. On this side, we'll do something similar. Network 192.168.1.0. I'll disable automatic summarization so that they don't automatically summarize any networks. Show IP ERGRP neighbor. Notice a neighbor relationship is established to router two. And we should see something similar here. Show IP ERGRP neighbor. Neighbor relationship is established to router one. Show IP route. Notice router one has 192.168.1.0 directly connected on fast ethernet 00 and 192.168.1.128 directly connected to serial 2 slash 0. Those are the two subnets. It's also learnt about network 192.168.1.64 from 192.168.1.130, in other words, router 2. In the same way, router 2 has 192.168.1.64 directly connected to fast ethernet 0 slash 0 and 192.168.1.128 one one twenty eight is directly connected to serial two slash zero. This router has learnt about a network through EIGRP from one nine two one six eight one one twenty nine, in other words router one. And it's learnt about network one nine two one six eight one dot zero. So router one at this point should be able to ping PC three and PC four. The pings succeed. Now if you remember PC3 was allocated this IP address, and we can confirm that by using the command ifconfig ethernet zero. There's the IP address of PC3. PC4, ifconfig eth zero. There's the IP address of PC4. So 
router one is able to ping both the PCs. Now, can PC1 ping those PCs? So can we ping 192.168.1.65? Yes, we can. And 66? Yes, we can. Let's trace to 192.168.1.65. Notice the trace goes to 192.168.1.62. Router 1. Then it goes to 192.168.1.130, which is router 2 on the serial subnet. And then it goes to 192.168.1.65 which is PC3. Be careful, these are separate subnets. These hosts are in different subnets. So that was an example of subnetting. We took a network, we created subnets, we worked out the subnet address, first host address, last host address, and broadcast address, and we configured the network accordingly, and then we tested that it worked. That was a simple example of a practical implementation of subnetting but it's really important that you know how to subnet. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.